Gregor, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, is there any doubt that the uh, the 2007 NCAA bracket at 149 pounds was clearly the most difficult bracket? <sighs> God, of all time? man, that's such a tough call. The only problem I have, I will give them the 08 bracket. I think that that probably squeaked it out a little on the 07 one. But that being said, there was zero mention of the 07 bracket, and most of those guys that were in the 08 bracket were in the 07 bracket. And then you add guys like Metcalf, Jenkins, Caldwell, which does do that upset a little bit. But I mean, give me a break here. We had a ton of guys at my weight that year too. It's funny, man. Seeing you get fired up on social media, yeah. you know, I think about you as like not really getting in, in, involved and engaged. I try not to. But you got excited about that. I wonder, what was it about that? Because I think there's probably a lot of people that don't understand the pedigree of, like, where you were in wrestling. Yeah. Was, that, was that something that you wanted people to see? Um, I think the people who really understand what I was talking about in that 07 versus 08 bracket probably know where I stand in it. But a lot of the guys, even guys that I work with, some of these younger guys that I, I train or train with, you know, these high school wrestlers that I help out, a lot of times they, like, think, like, oh, yeah, I mean, he, he kind of, yeah, he must have won. He's pretty good. And, like, some people, when I train them, they, you won the Nationals? So I kind of put it out as far as, like, like kind of a testament to how tough it was when I did win because, obviously, Flo puts out this amazing show or uh, documentary on the, the what's it called, the season. Or, no, the bracket, I'm sorry. And everyone kind of, like, I got, this is why I put it out. I remember why I put it out now. I got multiple messages, probably like dozens of messages saying, were you part of that bracket? And I was like, no, I moved up that year. But I won the year before in a bracket that was almost as tough. And I mean, I think if you had to say, and again, I don't know the exact stats. I went through it and I, if you saw the post, it's on the post. If anyone's interested in seeing it, it's still on my Instagram and on my Facebook. But it is, there's a statistical list that I went through and made about the guys that were in my bracket versus the guys that were in that year. And I think there were some more like, I, I don't know if this is the right term, but sexy names right. in the following year. But statistically speaking, it was almost a tie. Yeah. So in my year, there was something like eight national titles. In the following year, there was something like nine, okay? Um, and then there was something like, I don't know, eight other national finalists in the next year there was nine and then if you count all the all-americans that were there the year i won there were more future and present all-americans the year i won than the following year i mean i'll put it this way jordan burroughs didn't place in my bracket the year that i won and again jordan burroughs did come into his own later on down the road but that's a little known like little known fact that people have no idea about when i won the nationals Jordan Burroughs lost like at the round or two before I beat the guy who beat him. That being said, Jordan Burroughs is a lot better wrestler than I am. I want to make sure if he ever saw this, yeah, he's not hitting me up on Twitter saying let's have another match because when we did wrestle a few years down the road, he beat me up a bit. So, yeah. That's awesome. I don't know if I've ever seen you this passionate about anything other than fishing, of course. Uh, yeah. You've had a year and a half on the sidelines. Sure. Any amazing fishing stories during that time? I actually just told a fishing story over in the other room, and uh, this is probably like it's not crazy or like, like wild or zany, but it's a very like, uh, like kind of an impossible story for this to happen. But I got really into shark fishing this summer with my buddy, uh, Chris, they call him the shark man. He's like the go-to shark guy in long Island. And, uh, he got me into the drone fishing. So you fly out the baits with the drone. He's probably going to kill me for saying this cause it's kind of his thing. And like, but I got into it. I lost, uh, no, it's legal. Yeah. 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 We get permits for the, for the flight and everything. And, uh, or for the, where you're flying it and it's not in a restricted zone. So we fly the baits out, drop them over the sandbar fly the drone back, but the, the line is attached to your pole. So you only are flying, you're not fishing with a drone, you're dropping the bait. Because otherwise you have a 13 or 14 foot rod, you are never gonna be able to cast that. You know, you've got a pound of weight and bait on the end of it, good luck casting that. So you're not getting it out past the sandbar. Fly it out, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, we had um, a period of time, and again, this is his shark count, but I was part of it. We got over 100 sharks this season off the beach fishing for, this is where people are surfing and swimming. Yep. Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, no, well, you let them all go. We tag them and let them go. He, he has a thing with NOAA, which is the National Oceanic, uh, Oceanic Association or whatever it is, and he works through them and tags the sharks. But um, that being said, we had a big sandbar or brown shark, reeled it in. Uh, we were taking a picture with it. Someone was taking a picture of us in the waves, holding the nose up, lifting the tail, getting the perfect angle, the wave crashing over the shark. Take the picture. Say, hey, let me see that. 
and we look at the picture and we're like, what's that up in the background? And we zoom in on it. And up in the top, you can see a plane flying in the background. It's one of those like, you know, smaller prop planes and it's towing a banner behind it. And it says like, you know, hashtag Shark Week Discovery Channel. Yeah. And we're like, oh, what's going on here? Is that real? So we zoomed. Yeah, for sure. And then you look down the beach and it's still flying down. And when we showed people that, they thought it was a filter. We're like, no, no, no. This actually happened. Like, what an impossibility, you know what I mean? But as far as, like, my time, um, you know, I wouldn't say away from fighting. I've been training, obviously. But, uh, you know, we did have some downtime this summer. I was upstate, and uh, I spent quite a bit of time with my family and my girlfriend and uh, my friends from home, which is really nice. Otherwise, you know, if this hadn't have happened, this is kind of the silver lining. Had this never happened, um, you know, I would never had a four or five month stretch where I would go home and stay there. So, but my girlfriend got me into uh, mountain climbing. So I've been doing a lot of that. So we're doing the high peaks up in the Adirondacks and uh, Northern New York. So we're working on getting all 46 of those done. That's awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned the time off. I mean, I was surprised it was this long. Did yeah. you, did you intend for it to be this long? No. And like a ton of people get on me on social media about that. And it's like, I guess, you know, I don't really love to, to dive into it with people that are giving me uh, shit online about being out for so long. And, you know, they send the nasty messages like how's retirement or have you woken up yet from Kevin Lee? And it's just like, I try not to get into it, but it's like, I guess to address that, I would have to say, you know, I, I'm not, like taking a break from fighting. I've been training and I've been trying to stay ready, but it's, I broke my jaw against Kevin Lee. So I had a four or five month layoff as far as getting like touched in contact. You can't do anything. I was home getting clearance upstate New York from my, you know, facial doctor that, you know, gives you the clearance and tells the UFC that you're back for, you know, you know, ready to go. And that weekend I was going to a ski resort upstate before I came back down after getting cleared. And that's when all hell broke loose. That was the start of the whole quarantining thing and the whole lockdown and stay in place. That weekend we were at, it was 4 PM and the ski resort got shut down for the season. So we went home and I just stayed there, you know? So it was unfortunate timing. And of course people don't also realize, I'm not sure they know where I live. I live in Long Island. Like we're talking about 18 miles from like epicenter of this whole thing, you know, and again, I'm not like super worried about it. Like again, I, again, to each their own, but it's hard to find like where to train and who to train with when gyms aren't open, you know? So it's not something that I did on purpose and it's not like I wanted to sit out. It's just kind of unfortunate circumstances, you know? It's interesting because that's, you know, when I was, you know, from the outside looking in, I thought maybe, you know, difficult knockout, you're not used to losing. Sure wanted to take some time to mentally evaluate things, but really that was none of it. None of it. No, man. I would have loved to been right back to training after I got clearance in March. I would have loved to come back and gotten a fight in the next couple months. It just was unfortunate timing. You know, the gyms were closed in New York and it's like, then you got people sneaking around trying to keep a gym open and they're getting fined 10 grand. So it was tough. You know, and when things finally opened up, we figured it out and we got back on the pony, but it's like, I don't know if people understand if they're living in, you know, wherever in the Midwest and it's a little bit more open. If you're in Long Island or the New York City area, you couldn't train, yeah. you know, it was tough, man. Well, now that you're back and you, and you are able to train, I mean, is this one important to you? I mean, like I said, I know you're not a guy that's accustomed to losing very often. Sure. That was a difficult one. Is this, is it important to get in there and like get that behind you or, or because of your wrestling mentality, like, is it already behind you? I mean, it's been behind me. I thought it was, uh, I would say, in the, the few weeks following that loss, um, it was behind me. And, and I, I want to say this, too. The way I lost was easier to accept for me. And, I mean, people may be like, what is he talking about with that? But that was easier for me to accept than getting, like, beat up for three rounds or getting taken down and held down or, you know, like, or getting just, if I had been drugged through the mud and then lost a bad decision, that would have hurt me way more. I got hit with a really nice punch followed by a really clean kick and props to Kevin Lee on that, man. That was a beautiful combo. And it's, I don't know if you could do it better than that. And it wasn't lucky. It wasn't, I got caught. It was perfectly executed, and the credit's to him on that. It wasn't like, oh, well, you know, I had an off night. No, man, that was really solid on his end. So it was a little bit more ex not acceptable. You never want to say losing was acceptable. But, like, I didn't get drugged through the mud for 15 or 25 minutes and and then, you know, like, walked all over. That would definitely have been affected me a lot more, you know, just because then you're like, wow, man, nothing I did worked. Yeah. 
nothing that I could have possibly done would have changed the outcome of that fight, you know? Did it change any things in, in the course of, like, your career? I mean, you know, at the time, you were, like, dark horse title contender. We're like, sure. man, this guy's going to sneak in the back door and, and, you know, beat Habib or something, sure. you know? So um, did, did it change anything in terms of, like, your career arc or, or what the goals that you have for yourself? Well, I mean, a couple things I would say probably did, and not just that loss. I mean, anytime you're on the cusp of being in the conversation for another, you know, title eliminator or whatever the case would have been there, um, then obviously, yeah, it's going to change the trajectory of your your you know, path, but also so did, you know, 12 months of being on lockdown. You know, I think that probably has more to do with it. The great thing about the UFC and the fight game in general, but, you know, really the UFC is the fact that the zero at the end of your record isn't all they care about, you know, and they actually said that to me, that, you know, a few of the guys high up said, you know, don't worry about that, you know, just keep performing. And, and you'll be back in no time. And I think the great thing about fighting for the UFC and MMA in general is that you can erase all of that, the bad stuff, with a good performance on Saturday night. They only care about your last one. And that's, that's the proof right here is I had 13 fights in a row with, you know, five finishes in a row in the UFC. And I lost once, and that's all people remember. That so I can never worry. Yeah, you know exactly. You know, and, I mean, listen, I get it. That's part of the culture, and that's that's what goes on on Instagram. That's the trolling of you know what goes on these days. But all I gotta do is show up and perform on Saturday, and apparently they'll they'll forget about that one. That's awesome. Last yeah. thing for me, then I, I wonder because you're back now. <laughs> Big spot, right? Co-main event, ESPN. Sure. I mean, it's a big deal. So, so what's the goal here? I mean, is it just for you to get back in there and enjoy yourself, or is it to make a statement, remind people who you are? Or what, what, what is the goal on Saturday, other than just to win, of course? I mean, winning is really the the, the only thing that matters, you know. And um, I would say to kind of like uh, parlay that, I would say that winning and looking good doing it, not being a boring fight, not being a cautious fight, not being a fight that I'd wish I'd done more and kind of, I don't want to underperform. So I want to go out there and let loose, man. I want to, you know, show people that I'm the grappler in this division. I'm the guy who's, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of winning. Like you said, winning is the biggest, most important thing. Your hand raised at the end of the night is the most important thing, but I want to do it the right way with some conviction. No worries. Hello. Yeah. You mentioned that, you know, this business is a what have you done for me lately business. Sure. Did you know that before the Kevin Lee fight or did that loss particularly open your eyes to just how ruthless it can be? Okay, so... I want to make sure that I say that it's not the people that are actually in this business that, uh, you know, it's the it's the the casual troll people on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you know platform they choose that they you know kind of really aggressively go after you after a loss like that, you know, and it's like still four, 15 months later, I'm getting shit talked to me about that loss, you know, but these are the same people that are going to message me from a different account on Saturday night if I win, you know, so it is, those are, you know, but that's, that comes with it. I'm not bitching and complaining about it. I know that's part of it, but it's just like, come up with something new, man, you know, so. Is that the worst part of it? Just hearing the same thing over and over again? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Joe Rogan says it all the time. You just can't look at the comments sometimes or open messages that if they're not from someone you know. And I've been getting better about that because it's just like, holy shit, man, this is a lot of, you know, whatever you want to call it. Last thing for me, I know you're something of a creature of habit on your fight weeks. Yeah. So has this experience been kind of a mindfuck to deal with or have you just been able to roll with it? Just rolling with it, man. I knew it was going to be different coming in. Um, so I kind of accepted that, and I knew that there wasn't going to be a whole lot that I could do to force my way this week. But we've really done a good job of being as a uh, – you know, we're acclimating to the changes we have to make as far as getting all of our workouts, getting the right food, getting the right sleep. We're, yeah, we're, 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 we're making do. Cool. Just a couple yeah, yeah. real quick ones. If you could, just taking a look at your opponent, because I know you're, you're very, very smart and you're very analytical when it comes down to your opponent. Sure. Break them down for me. Where's uh, the and What sort of things are you looking uh, for? I'm going to stay right away from that one. I don't love talking about my opponents. I don't do a ton of film study. My coaches watch the films and they train me accordingly. So I'm going to, you know, I don't mean to be a dick, but I'm, I don't really love talking about my opponents. I try to focus more on what I'm going to do on Saturday night. I'm more than happy to talk to you about what I think I should be doing. 
Well, that's going to be my follow up. I mean, sure. what needs to happen, what needs to happen to make sure that you you get your arm raised? You talked about making sure that you got your arm raised. What yeah, yeah. things need to happen to make sure that you do get your arm raised that night? I mean, I don't think it's any surprise that after the last fight, I think a lot of people coaching from their couches at home told me, you know, I got a lot of messages telling me I should have used my wrestling, right? Well, no shit, you know. <laughs> Holy shit, you think I didn't think of that? You know, and I guess the, the if, you know, to, to their credit, if I had to say any part of that had some truth to it, I would say that you're probably right. I probably should have tried to wrestle a little sooner, but it's like, then you get, you know, the hindsight's 2020 thing. Then what if I would have dove in on a shot that wasn't there and landed, gotten whacked with a knee or an uppercut? And then they would have been sending me messages telling me, why did you, you just, you forced the wrestling, man. You should have done, you're striking, you were hitting with that jab. You should have kept doing that. You know, so they, you can't make them happy, you know. But I would say as far as like what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch any of my previous fights. That's what you should expect Saturday night. You know, high pace and a lot of attacks. Perfect. Best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, guys.